Hello, everyone. Welcome to our latest online event here at the University of California Merced. My name is Ricky Hill, and I am your e-recruiter. As always, I bet you can guess what I'm about to say. I'm so excited to be here with you and for all of you to be taking some time out of your evening to spend with us tonight. We are thrilled to be able to talk to you about Housing Move-In. That is right around the corner, coming up here in August, just another couple of days away here. So we're going to dive into that for the fall 2024 housing move-in and everything to do with that. We've got checklists, we've got everything galore for you tonight to give you a heads up on what you need to do before you get here and how that day is going to look when you are here. Of course, before we get started, I'd like to give you a couple of quick Zoom reminders. If you need to adjust your audio settings, you can do that in the lower left corner of your screen. If at any time you'd like to zoom into something that we are showing you, go ahead and click on view options in the upper portion of your screen. And of course, we have a jam-packed presentation for you tonight. We are also fully staffed behind the scenes. I think we have record-breaking staff numbers tonight. So we're ready to get to your questions live. So we, of course, have that time saved towards the end of our presentation tonight. So we'd love for you to go ahead and take full advantage of sending in those questions and just letting us get to those later on. Of course, we will be marking some of those answer live. So if you do happen to see that, then just know that we will be getting to that question towards the end. But as I said, we are fully staffed behind the scenes. We are ready to go and to get these questions answered for you tonight for the fall 2024 next steps for UC Merced Housing. We are recording this event tonight. I know we have a few folks that may have to jump off early or may be missing that tonight. So we will be posting that hopefully in the next 24 hours or so. So you can also take a look for that in case you do want to go back and revisit a little bit more. Now, before we do jump in, I want to just ask everybody, and you can use your reaction button, which I see a lot of you have found already. We're excited to see those reactions, all the party hats and the hearts. Let us know, are you excited to become a Bobcat and to move in here in just the next little while in the month of August to get ready to start at UC Merced? Look at all of that coming in. I love it. All right. Well, once again, my name is Ricky Hill. I am your e-recruiter, and we are going to go ahead and get things started. I'm going to hand things over to my dear friend, Scott, and we will get started right now. All right. Thanks, Ricky. And welcome, Bobcats. We're excited to talk to you today about moving into housing for fall 2024. For some of you, this might be something you've done before, and you're just here to get information. For many of you, this might be your first time moving into campus housing, and we're looking forward to sharing the information you need to help be successful and plan that day. So today, we're going to talk in general about four specific areas, preparing before you arrive, the check-in process, parking and unloading, and what to expect. There will be a couple places where we, were ref we will refer to the housing portal. And so if, while we're here early in the presentation, if you wanna be on, a, if you have a mobile device that you wanna use to access the housing portal and be able to open your housing application or view the portal homepage, I'm gonna show you a couple of screenshots from that. I'm not gonna go to that page live, uh, but if you wanna follow along or get to that place um, that I'm showing, you know, you'll need to be logged into the housing portal. And of course, it may take you a few steps to get there. You don't have to. Um, it's very easy to find if you don't, if you're not able to access that and uh, participate in the Zoom at the same time. Uh, but for those who have the option, I just wanted to share that uh, follow along opportunity. So before you arrive, this is one of the first things on the housing portal. Um, you want to make sure that you've scheduled your own move-in time. So it's independent of the room and building you're assigned. We do have move-in appointment times from August 22nd through August 25th. That's Thursday to Sunday. Those times are spread out in 15-minute increments. Now, we don't expect you to unload and, and move in in 15 minutes. That would be crazy. Although I'm, there might be a great business in that sometime. But we, we uh, are mainly interested in spreading out the arrival to campus and then folks kind of naturally distribute. So we're just trying to uh, keep everybody from coming at the same one or two hour window. That helps make things a bit more smooth for everyone. So we do have limitations on the number of times per day. Um, if you do have an appointment scheduled for the day and you're gonna be you know, 10 or 15 minutes late, you don't need to call us at housing, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. We understand some of you are coming all the way up from San Diego, from, um, LA or coming down, uh, maybe from NorCal, and things happen, traffic happens, and you don't, and as long as you're coming around the time, we expect it's all right. Um, if there's a couple hours there, we're okay. It's mostly about the day. 
Um, the move-in times are first come, first serve, and a lot of folks, we've had over 2,400 students select their move-in time already. There are still move-in times available. Um, and once you select the time, if something does change later on, you can log back into the portal and change that time. So a good example is maybe you're feeling ambitious about leaving and moving in on Thursday, but by Tuesday, you realize that you've got a lot more shopping or packing to do. And maybe uh, you know you, your folks can't get the work day off they thought, or something's going on. Uh, so a, a lot of high schoolers are starting school next week. So you might have siblings that have other conflicts. You can just log in and reschedule that for a different time. If there's a real issue with the time um, that you really need or can't find and we don't have availability, you can always email the housing office, housing at ucmerced.edu, and they can we can try to work with you on finding a different time. Uh, so we just ask that you try to stay in the arrival window, and if you need to cancel and reschedule, go ahead and do so on the housing portal. So as you're preparing to leave, I'm going to share with this group what I shared with parents when I spoke during orientation. Um, the main things you're going to need to bring are the bedding, um, your any kind of medications or insurance, any personal records that you might you might need. So if you're going to get a job on campus, you're going to need like a birth certificate or a passport, um, the kind of I-9 uh, documentation, that's the form you have to fill out. So if you're not sure and you wanna look it up, you can Google I-9 and it'll show you what kind of documents to bring. Um, if you want a campus job, that's important. Um, if you, we have in the residence halls, your dressers will have a place that you can lock, either a desk dresser, uh, a desk drawer, a dresser drawer, and then in many of the bathrooms also have smaller lockers. So while you're in the shower, you can lock your phone in that locker. So little portable padlocks, like little combination locks or key locks can be helpful. Um, they're also helpful because you can take them to the gym and use the day lockers while you're there um, if you're going to go get a workout. Um, you're going to have to do your own laundry and you're going to have to kind of manage your own hygiene. And while this may seem... Uh, simple, you, you get, I'd encourage you to go look in the bathroom and look at your daily routine and make sure that everything you're using on a daily basis, you're going to be able to get that into the bag that you're going to need to bring with you to school. Um, don't forget laundry detergent or dryer sheets. Um, you're going to need to carry your laundry. In almost all buildings, the laundry is outside, it's off your floor and it'll be down on the first floor. So something to carry your laundry, some soap to put in the laundry. You don't need to worry about bringing a bunch of quarters. All the laundry is included um, as well, but you may wanna bring things to clean yourself, to do some spot cleaning of your space, like some wipes to clean, wipe down your counter, maybe some towels if you wanna clean up around the room. Um, we do provide vacuums, so you don't have to bring a vacuum cleaner. Some students find it to be helpful to bring a small handheld a vacuum for cleaning up small, like if you're eating some chips and drop some, um, that can be helpful to clean that up off the carpet. But we do have full-size vacuums available in all the residence halls. We also recommend looking at getting a long cord uh, for your phone to charge, or if you want to bring a portable battery, like a rechargeable battery. Um, particularly in South Campus, many of you are going to be in top bunks, either the top of the loft or the top of the bunk, and it'll be helpful to have a cord that can reach uh, you know, six to eight feet up there. Or if you get a, a battery pack, then you can just use that to charge your phone while you sleep. If you like to have your phone uh, next to you while you sleep. And I know I do. It's also my alarm clock. And so it's helpful to be able to plug that in. And all the outlets are down at the bottom of the wall and your bed will be up at the top. So having an extra long cord or a way to charge your phone while you're in bed is helpful. Things that you should leave at home, don't bring any kitchen appliances, no hot pots, no rice cookers, uh, no air fryers. We don't bring any of those things. The rooms are not designed for cooking. They're not ventilated or wired for cooking. And those are prohibited. And if you we find them, we're gonna ask you to take them home um, and document that. Um, we also ask that you leave any weapons at home. Uh, so maybe you were watching the Olympics and got really inspired with archery. Um, there are ways if you're taking a class that uses, you know, uh, like for fencing or archery, um, you need to let us know and we can talk with you about storage options with your sport or club. But for the most part, anything else like a weapon, um, you know, large hunting knives, obviously guns, uh, any kind of firecrackers or fireworks, those things are not going to be allowed in the residence halls. And uh, pets, everyone, you're allowed a pet. 
you're allowed, and specifically, and only you are allowed a fish in a tank 10 gallons or less. That's the only pet that students are allowed to have on campus. Now, if you have a, a documented disability and you have an emotional support animal, um, or you have a service animal, uh, those, again, documented, those are permitted. And when you get those approvals, we send you information about uh, the proper ways to manage uh, those animals uh, in the residence halls and our expectations for that, uh, but no general pet. So your animal has to either be a, an official ESA approved by Student Accessibility Services, or um, you're welcome to have a fish and fish are great. Um, no candles or incense. Uh, first of all, the fire is a risk. Secondly, um, not everyone shares your same sense of smell and what smells great. And so incense is just really strong and people have reactions about it. And you might, I mean, you'll find out when you get here. I mean, you've got a lot of folks living in a closed space and, and incense is a choice that you make for everyone around you. So leave that behind. You also don't need to bring any Wi-Fi routers or networks. If you're on South Campus, there's no ethernet. So there's not a place to have a network. Um, if you're on North Campus, there is ethernet, but um, those, why, if you bring your own Wi-Fi router, it's going to interfere with the Wi-Fi signal that we already are providing in all the residence halls. Each residence hall has good Wi-Fi signal into each room, and you don't necessarily need to have a separate wire router. Every room is permitted one 900-watt microwave. That's every bedroom. So if you're in a suite that has three rooms or you're in a triple that has one bedroom, um, you're allowed one microwave per bedroom that's 900 watts or less. And that's not a very big microwave. That's kind of a small microwave. So just check that wattage because Cal Fire will check it when we when we check the rooms in the fall. Um, and they'll let, you, they'll let us know if that's 900 watts or bigger. Um, uh, also, you're allowed one 4.2 cubic foot or less refrigerator for every two roommates in the room. So if you have a triple, you're allowed two. If you have a double, you're allowed one. In a single, you're allowed one. In a quad, you're allowed two. So, and no more than that, and they have to be 4.2 cubic feet or less. And you're also allowed a single serve coffee maker. This is a Keurig style coffee maker that uses pods or Nespresso, one of those um, types of machines, uh, but no full size coffee makers. Uh, no uh, hot water kettles or anything like that. If you scan the QR code in the upper right-hand corner, it'll take you to our uh, documentation that has more information about what to bring and leave behind. The bed sheets are twin extra long. So be sure that you pick up bed sheets and that you have pillows and blankets. You're gonna need those on day one. So this is, if you were, if you logged into the portal, this is one of the things that we ask you, you log into the housing portal. We want you to double check that you have a, uh, a room and a building assignment. And you can also see your roommates as they are currently um, on that housing portal. Most assignments, and I mean most at this point, we're talking about 98% of the assignments are done. And while we might make some room changes as we get accommodations, or as we have uh, like student we're constantly working with students about issues they might be experiencing or their need changes, changing needs. We may make some room changes, but most of you are gonna be set in the room you're arriving in at this point. If we do make a change, we will send you an email to notify you and you're welcome to touch base with us. And that usually will include some information about why we did it. Um, the changes often include at this point, ADA accommodations, or if we have to correct gender placement. Uh, so if someone was in a room and it has genders in that room, they didn't necessarily expect, um, that's a reason we might uh, readjust assignments. And then we're also continuously trying to honor roommate requests if we can. We can't guarantee them because of the, the nature of our process. We, we started, some folks in this call might have signed their housing contract all the way back in February. And some of you might have just signed it last week. So it's very, and we can't always guarantee we'll get roommates together, but we continuously work on that process. And to that end, once you get here and move in, um, you'll have time to get settled. And then in October, we're going to start an elective room change process where we'll open up uh, the community to moving around. So if there are vacancies or different rooms, or you really are looking for a different kind of space, uh, we'll have an opportunity for you to request that. And we'll spend some time in October trying to help you find the right fit for your residence hall experience. So on the housing portal, if you open the housing portal and open your fall your 2024-2025 housing application, 
Once you open that application, it's gonna drop you onto the status page. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this section with your fall room assignment. It'll tell you the room type, double, triple, or quad, which means two people, three people, or four people share the space. It'll also say what the room is, and then it'll give you your mailing address below there. Now, the thing missing there is your name at the top. So you'd have your name. If it was me, it'd be Scott Lepla. I'd be in Glacier Point 452, T1, and I am uh, at 5400 North Lake Road, Merced 95340. 5400 is the residential address. If you look up the UC Merced address, it will say 5200. But 5400 is the one you want to use. That makes sure your mail gets delivered uh, to us in the housing office, and we will process and sort that mail. So double check those uh, assignments. If you do find something there you're not sure about, uh, and below the mailing address, you'll there's a there's a table that will show roommates. I'm not showing any on my example here, um, but the, if you have roommates, they'll show here. If you're in a suite, it will show everyone assigned to your suite and their room. So if you happen to live in Tuolumne, Mariposa, or any of the rooms in Valley Terraces like Tulare, Merced, Calaveras, you're gonna see five or six, five people listed in there if you happen to be in a six person suite. Don't freak out, you're not sharing a room with five people. Just check the location and it will tell you on the space that they're, which room they're in and you'll see that you know, you're, you're not sharing that room, you're just sharing the suite. Um, the the uh, check-in times that show on the room assignment, those don't control your move-in. Only the move-in appointment that you set is your move-in time. So if we do change, again, and this question came up today, I was working with a student and they asked me, hey, if we change our, I was reassigned to a different building, does that change my move-in time? And the answer, it doesn't. If you checked, if you selected your move-in time, that's your time to arrive. It doesn't matter which building um, or floor or room you're assigned. So we're currently in the early arrival phase. We have some students, uh, sponsored student employees or athletics. Uh, these are folks that have a reason to come back early. And this might include RAs or does include RAs, uh, but it also includes some dining employees or other folks that are moving in early. They typically have already asked for and received approval for that. Um, we're also busy turning over our spaces that we use for summer and conference housing. So we, we don't always have the availability to support early arrival, um, but those students that have it have requested it. On August 20th, our move-in volunteers will move in. So if you're here and you've volunteered and gotten a confirmation email, maybe you attended one of the webinar trainings we had on preparing to be a move-in volunteer um, earlier this last weekend, um, that is your day to move in on the 20th. August 18th to the 21st, that's early arrival for everyone else. And generally by the 18th, if you have a reason to move in early, um, we'll approve it as long as the space is available. There are some rooms where the space may not be available until the 22nd because we're doing ongoing maintenance that um, we're gonna try to complete before the move-in period. But you can make that request if you're on the housing portal on the application in that status page, you'll see the section to request early arrival. After the 21st, when you get to the 22nd, it's really just about your move-in appointment. Um, you don't have to, you just need the move-in appointment. And then after the 25th, you can come whenever you want. And you might say to yourself, wow, people move in after Sunday. Yeah, we'll have some students who either they've had um, trouble getting to UC Merced, they had you know car trouble or something, or we have some, you know, some of our seasoned juniors and seniors, they know their first class isn't until Friday and they may not show up until Thursday. So if you check in after that time that we do have some move-in appointments from the 26th forward, um, they're very few, uh, but you can also check in anytime the desk is open. They're open from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. that first week. Um, early arrival housing is paid, it costs extra. Um, so it's $39.06 a day uh, for that. Um, if you select it, unless you like, unless you have an employer sponsor or someone like that. So we're going to shift a little bit. We've talked about, you know, what you see on the portal, things you can prepare for. Now we're going to talk a little bit about move in day itself, how we arrive on campus, check in and receive the keys, unload, and then either move to long term parking and then depart. So what we're seeing here, I'm showing you a campus map. This is a big picture of campus. In general, there are two approaches to UC Merced on Lake Road or Bellevue Road. 
And you're going to need to know which building you're living in. So make sure you put that someplace where you can find it um, when you're driving in or you have it on a post-it note or something that you keep. Um, you want to know what building you're assigned. For many of you, you're going to be assigned South Campus buildings, El Portal, Sentinel Rock, Granite Pass, or Glacier Point. And you would arrive and park um, in the green section, which is the Bellevue lot uh, section. So they'll all be marked. You'll see signage guiding you in, where to park, and then you'll um, exit. That's where you'll stop. And then you will get your keys and carts before you unload. And that's particularly important on North Campus, where you may have parking along Scholars Lane. If you're moving into Valley Terraces or uh, Mariposa or Tuolumne, you definitely need to park in Scholars Lot, which is at the um, opposite, at the far end of the soccer fields down here. Um, they are, um, you'll need to stop, get your keys, and get your carts before you move your car into position. So when you, uh, because we want, what we wanna do is we wanna get you ready to move in. Then you wanna move your, leave your car in the loading and unloading zone as short a time as possible. So you and your family, and we'll also have volunteer helpers there to help unload. Use those helpers, put them to work. They're there to help you. And they'll carry, help you carry your stuff up to your room and get it, just get stuff put in your room. Don't worry about unpacking at that time. Get your car unloaded and then move your car into the long-term parking, which is the big kind of green section there in Bellevue lot. That's true for everyone. So you want to get your car over to long-term parking. Uh, so then you can walk back and finish unpacking. That way your car is not taking up precious unloading space. So to, to zoom in on that a little bit, so we'll have the arrival lot, which is right here in that, it's in within that green tri uh, square that I showed. And you park in the arrival lot, and then you'll walk over to the conference center. So you just follow, you'll follow along University Avenue, uh, right uh, along University Avenue, and then you'll go and check in. If you need a cat card, if you weren't able to pick yours up at orientation, um, or if you lost yours, cat card will be in the conference center this year, and they'll be able to print you a card right there. Um, there's also... Uh, and, and so that's where the carts are. So on the next screen, we're going to show you greater detail about that. Uh, but that's the kind of walking path from the arrival lot. That's where you're going to start first. And then when you move to unloading, so the yellow part is the arrival, then you're going to follow the green arrows and you're going to go down to the unloading areas. You'll drive your car down to south unloading, for example. And then you can use these footpaths between El Portal and Sentinel Rock to, to get to your building along academic walk, or if you're, if depending on where you're parked, you can also access El Portal from the front. Uh, for South Campus, it's a very easy path. You're all walking the same path between El Portal and Sunder Rock up after academic walk, and all the building entrances that you need with the elevators are on academic walk. For North Campus, it's a little different. Depending on where you park, um, you will park along Scholars Lane or along Muir Pass, and then you'll use the sidewalks between Tuolumne and Mariposa, or the sidewalks between Kern and Kings uh, and the Valley Terraces to move your cart um, to your room. So where you see the little cups with the straws, uh, those are, we'll have water stations there where folks can get a bottle of water. It is gonna be hot, so plan for the heat. I just wanted to show a little bit about the conference center itself. Um, you'll have to excuse my my drawing here. I did my best, but I'm not much of an artist. So when you come into the conference center, there's a big ballroom here, and that's where the keys, uh, where you get your keys. So we'll have check-in stations set up there. There'll be big flags and music playing. Um, we'll also have a refreshment station there as well. Um, we'll have different staff and campus partners there uh, to provide assistance. So health and wellness will be there. Uh, we'll have the Ascend group that's going to be working with the first year experience on Monday and Tuesday. They'll be there to share information. Residence Education will be there to give you your dining meal band that you're going to use, your wristband that you'll use for the first uh, four days while you're on campus. And you'll also get your keys. Cat car will be there well, as well. So in this ballroom, we have a lot of things here that can help you um, get settled and get ready uh, to actually get to start moving. We do cart distribution here as well. So we'll do it out of uh, these classrooms. 
which are also in the conference center. So you'll get your cart and exit, and then you can go out and start your moving. Um, we have another room held for volunteer staff as well. And so the move-in volunteers have a space where they can drop um, their stuff while they're doing move-in. They can leave their bags and, and everything. We also have some refreshments in there for them as well. But this is what the conference center, what you'd expect in the conference center. You're going to go right to the ballroom. And then we'll have signage and staff in there to help guide you where you need to go. That's where you're going to get your keys um, in the at where you that you actually need to get into your room. A little bit about this experience. So the key and check-in part tends to go pretty quickly. It doesn't take us very long to get you your keys and to get you into your room. Um, so that part to get you access to your room. And if you need a cat card, that also won't take too long. Uh, that part usually goes pretty quickly. The part where you'll want to plan for the heat and you want to plan what you're bringing with you in this first trip, when you go and move out and go to the unloading area, if it, there can be, again, we'll have two elevators for every building and we spread folks out. So you will probably have to wait a little bit for an elevator. It doesn't usually take too long. I think last year we measured our longest waits in about 15 minutes for the elevator, um, but every year is different. But so plan um, to be waiting, kind of standing in alarm. Think, of, think about it like a theme park uh, for that. And I think it, while the lines move pretty quickly, I just like to let folks know to plan because it can be over 100 degrees sometimes on move-in. You know, the forecast is looking pretty good, although I probably just jinxed it by saying that. So just plan on being in the sun. So hats, maybe a long sleeve shirt, or you want to make sure you have your own uh, water bottle. Think about who's coming with you for move-in. And are they going to be able to handle walking four to five miles over the course of the day in the heat, you know, moving things? And that might change or help you, you know, people can always come visit you later, um, but we want to make sure that they're safe while they're here. So um, we don't have any, we haven't, I'm going to knock on wood, we haven't had any major fires in the area. So smoke isn't so much an issue, but the heat, the sun and the heat are challenges. So I recommend also probably wearing closed toed shoes because there's gonna be a lot of carts moving around. You're gonna be moving things, but that's just a recommendation uh, from watching students move over the years. We don't necessarily have transportation for guests. Like we don't usually have uh, carts to move people around. Again, thinking about who's coming with you for move-in day. Um, if they're gonna have trouble walking a lot of distance, you might wanna think about maybe they maybe they can go up to the room and be in the room, um, and then you are you may have some other folks with you. Um, they can be unpacking while you are unloading. Uh, but we won't necessarily have carts to get folks around if they have, uh, if they're not able to walk. Uh, also, from August 22nd to, I mean, really until the 27th, most of you are doing the same thing at the same time. So the lines that we experience during that time for like the dining hall or stuff are often some of the biggest ones. And then once you get people start going to class, everyone's schedule distributes. But when you're thinking about planning your time, just know there's going to be some times where if you go to the gym, it's going to be busy. If you're trying to go uh, to the dining hall, it might be busy because you might be going for breakfast and lunch and dinner. Um, and everyone tends to go at the same time because there's no class to spread everyone out. So just be patient and plan for that. Um, there will be some construction. So right now they're building the new Med Ed building behind um, Glacier Point. We also have some construction over in the Valley Terraces. The the uh, We are redoing the fire lane access between these. And we started this project um, last year and it's it continues. They are getting close to being finished. I saw them putting grass down the other day, which I'm really excited about. Uh, but there will be areas that will be marked that you can't unload from along Scholars Lane. And you may need to um, access the Valley Terraces, not along the main sidewalk that goes through the grassy area that I've got um, blocked out here. Uh, but you may need to access them either through the Cat Quad um, uh, along Bobcat Lane, or you may need to access them from scholars between Tulare and Kern. And we'll have folks out there to help guide you. My hope though, is that this might, I mean, this is ready. I saw them, they've almost got all the concrete down. There's just one section they're missing and I'm hoping they'll get it done uh, next week. Once you get moved in, um, for first years and new transfers, uh, we recommend that, uh, well, we all need to plan Monday, August 26th, you're gonna pick up 
your Bridge Crossing t-shirt. And Tuesday, August 27th is our Bridge Crossing tradition. And you're going to get a lot of information about this. You're going to hear about it from your RA. You're going to hear about it at move in. You're going to hear about it at Ascend. It's really a special part of the UC Merced experience where we welcome you into the community. So please plan to attend that on Tuesday. Um, a lot of us will be there to cheer you on as you make your transition into our community. Classes don't start until Wednesday the 28th. On Sunday night, the 25th, there will be first floor meetings with the RAs. And it's important to plan for this if you to attend. Um, we do ask that all first year students be present at these and new transfers so that you can get the information you need about living on campus. And we also share information about emergency evacuation, um, how to get assistance when you need it. You get to meet your RA if you haven't met them by that time, which is important because they're one of your best resources uh, for uh, living on campus. There will also be planned uh, fire drills, usually the second week. Of course, I'm not putting the dates here because that would be a terrible drill, uh, but we will have, you know, you can expect that we will practice that information that we, we uh, shared at the first floor meetings uh, during the second week of the term. And with that, we can open it up to questions. Fantastic job, Scott. As always, I hope everyone was paying close attention. Always a great opportunity to grab smartphones, start taking pictures of some of those things. And of course, we did have that QR code that we can maybe slide back over to that one in case someone didn't get a chance to grab that at that moment. And we can also drop that link for you over into the chat area. So mentioning the chat area, if you haven't yet opened that little dialog box, go ahead and do that now because we have been sending you some important information there as well. It's a great opportunity again to go ahead and click on those links and get those browser windows opening up so that if you don't have a chance right now while we're actually speaking to you and answering these questions live, you can definitely go back to that in a little while after we wrap up here and you can take a look and bookmark those pages. So having said all of that information, let's go ahead and jump into our questions. The first one I can actually help with, and then Scott, you can add on to it if you'd like. We have people asking if we have any photos of the dorms, the inside, the outside, those types of things. And what I can share with you, and that has already been dropped in chat, but we will drop it again for you. We have an episode of what's called Bobcat Life. So we have a series on YouTube. There's a couple of episodes there, and there is one in particular that is actually a very kind of a mini version of a dorm tour. And it does give you an inside look into the laundry facility. So I know those were mentioned. Um, so that would be a great chance for you to go ahead and get a little sneak peek. And then Scott, do you have anything else that, in terms of photos that are available on the website? Yeah, on the housing.ucmerced.edu website, on the, um, I believe it's called um, Living Options, there's a breakdown of each building and there are also photos and photo tours of those as well on there. Perfect. All right, and the next question, it looks like we have some parents on with us tonight. I always like to give a very special welcome to our parents and families, guardians, friends, everyone that are supporting your scholars and moving in this during this exciting time. This particular question is from a parent or guardian uh, letting us know that their son is still on a waiting list. So is there mm -hmm. any advice that we can give them in terms of what happens next? Yes, so we, uh, we are cons consistently I'm trying to communicate and work with our students who have already secured housing contracts about their intentions for the fall. And as they cancel or their plans change, we're able to offer that space out to students who are on the housing wait list. We didn't have a, our numbers for wait list are actually quite small this year. We only had, uh, well, we, we don't have as many as we've had in the past. Um, and so my, I'm hopeful that we're going to that we may be able to get to everyone, uh, but we may uh, do just have to continue to wait. We are still are getting, I think we have some, uh, there's going to be some admissions actions this week and next week uh, that will open up some space for, space for us. But if you're on that wait list, um, we don't have housing for you. So please, don't, please wait until we offer you housing before you come to move into the residence hall. So um, that's a great thing to do on the housing portal. Uh, is to when you first open your application, you can see the, the status of your contract right at the top of the page. It needs to be contract signed. If it's anything other than contract signed, you don't have housing for full term. So good, good verification. I did bring that up with parents and orientation, but some of you may have signed late or maybe didn't get a chance to attend orientation. Uh, so that's a, it's a good thing to check. Have your students show you that uh, before you jump in the car. Great advice. 
All right, the next question. So I know we have a lot of questions coming in asking, am I able to bring and then fill in the blank a very specific item? So I'll go ahead and ask this one. And then I know we also have a website that will give information as well as a PDF document we can link to that'll give everyone kind of a checklist on what to look at all at once. But I'll go ahead and toss this one out. Can students have a small air purifier in their rooms? Yes, there's no reason. I thought I thought for a minute we were going to go to air fryer. And yet, <laughs> no, small, big, it doesn't matter. Uh, no cooking appliances, but an air purifier. Yes, you're welcome to have an air purifier. Um, it has to be, you know, like a, a safe air purifier, which means it has to be underwriter, usually like a tag on it, UL approved, um, like on the cord itself. And you have to use it in a safe manner. So you can't have it like taped to the ceiling or something like that. But yes, you're welcome to to have an air purifier. Perfect. Kind of a tricky one. I was thinking air fryer as well when I uh, saw yeah. that. <laughs> Wanted to toss that one out. And then go ahead and check over in the chat box. We did just drop some important links to you that mm -hmm. will give you more information about the move in, what to bring, what not to bring. All right. Next question. When we get there, will there be staff members helping everyone go through the process and helping them get moved in? Yes, we'll have staff, uh, we'll have signage and volunteers helping get you from the arrival lot to the conference center. We'll have all our housing staff. Many of the student workers that are uh, going to be there that day are also on this chat helping answer your questions. So they're going to be present helping you check in. Uh, myself and my team will be there. We'll be there every day, the full move in time, uh, helping respond to questions. So on that map, there's a section for housing housing uh, leadership on there. And we're going to be at the conference room for any bigger questions that are beyond just giving you your keys and helping you get your CAT card. We'll also have RAs. They'll be present around the residence halls. They're going to be walking around meeting their residents. We're going to have some in the lobbies helping guide uh, families and students to the move-in process. So there should be plenty of folks around and plenty of signage to help you uh, we, we have over 300 move-in volunteers scheduled to assist over the four days, and they're also going to be at the unloading spaces. And these are um, some first-year students that will have training and kind of know where they're at. Uh, the others will be uh, continuing students, some faculty some, and staff um, who will be able to help guide you uh, to your building or help get you where you need to go. Perfect. And then how many people or are they limited to how many people can actually help them move in or just kind of hang out? We know it's a big opportunity or a big <laughs> milestone for people. I know yeah. when I moved into the dorms, it was a big deal. There. So are we asking, um, if you're asking about move-in volunteers, you're welcome to use as many of them as you can get to help you when you're there. Um, so we have, you know, usually 10 to 15 move-in volunteers at every given station. So you can welcome, you're welcome to use those students. Um, you're welcome to bring the family with you that you want. So in the past and COVID times, we did have some restrictions, but we don't really have those restrictions anymore. I just ask you, remember, please remember that it's going to be hot. And it's going to be sunny and it's going to be hot. So you want to think about who's coming with you and what their role is going to be on move-in day. Very good. I know we had another question that was specific to siblings. So, I mean, they can bring anyone that they would like to hang out with them and experience mm -hmm. the day and assist them, right? Yeah, for sure. And we encourage it. Very good. And lots of photo opportunities on campus. We have tons of artwork and, and just fun places to take pictures with your family and friends. So once you're moved in and you kind of explore a little bit, just keep that in mind too. I know everyone always has their smartphone with them, but just make sure that you keep that handy to kind of document and make those memories for the day. All right, next question. Do I need a parking permit on move-in day? You do not need a parking permit on move-in day um, as long as you're just here for move-in day. Once you spend the night, so if you're staying the night, you'll have to buy a permit. Um, residents need to get the overnight permit to stay, but for the unloading and the arrival parking, the parking is free on the uh, 22nd through the 25th. Very good. And now can they have guests stay overnight with them? This is a great time to talk about the general kind of guidelines around residence hall guests. Yes, you can have guests stay with you. You do need the permission of any roommates that are have moved in at that time. So if you get there and you're the third roommate that's there, if you're going to have somebody spend the night, you should talk to them in advance. Your roommate's emails are on your housing portal. Just let them know and ask them, hey, I would like, you know, for my parents or family to be able to stay with us. And there's no restrictions. You can have them stay there. Um, and in the housing guidelines online, the housing handbook, there are overall policies for guests, but you are allowed to have overnight guests 
with the permission of your roommates. Very good. Next question. Is the drinkable or is the tap water that we have, is it drinkable or do they need to specifically get like purified water or some type of water purifier or, or bottled water in their room? Yeah, no, our water is purified and well, not purified. It's it's potable and and meets all standards. We have water bottle filling stations in most of the most of the at the most of the floors, I actually believe in South Campus. So there's a different water fountains and they all have bottle filling stations. There's bottle filling stations on and water fountains on North and South and the tap water that comes out, you can use that to brush your teeth. If you want to fill a cup with it and drink it, you certainly can. Perfect. And I know something that I always appreciate walking across campus are the hydration stations. So definitely bring in some type of reusable water bottle. I think almost everyone does that at this point. But if you don't, go ahead and invest in one. Or on that day and sometime after, go ahead and hop over to the bookstore and buy one that's branded with a nice a bobcat, a paw, something like that. So that way you are showing your bobcat spirit while you're on campus. But we do have those hydration stations around and it is a little bit chilled water. So I know I take full advantage of that while on campus. So just keep that in mind. All right, the next question has to do with the laundry facilities. People are asking, is there a special type of laundry detergent that they need to bring? Does it need to be like the pods or powder, liquid? Does it make a difference with the machines? Machines will take all of them. You just need to you know, read the instructions on the machine and read the instructions on your soap and the, the two things will meet there. So you can use, you can just throw this, there's a space for liquid detergent there's a space you could throw the powder in there. So I would say just get what you're used to that you know how to use that's going to work with your clothes and you can bring that and it'll work just fine. Perfect. And a little tip I will mention is that if you haven't yet gotten used to doing your own laundry, maybe at home you have family members that kind of do everything that's their assigned chore. This is a great, great time for you to go ahead and start practicing mm -hmm. that the next week or two that you have until move in time. It's not too complicated, but of course you don't know what you don't know. So if you haven't done that yet in life, this would be another great milestone to learn how to do that so that we don't end up with all of your clothes being the same color. So, and also learning how to dry, how to fold, all of that fun adult stuff. So just a little tidbit for me to you. All right, the next question, in the actual dorm rooms themselves, do we assign people specific beds or is it a first come first choice type situation? Yes, it is first come, first choice. So whoever gets there can pick the bed that they want um, when they get there. The only exception is if you have, you need to check your email. If you have received an email from housing that says you have to take an upper bunk, then you have to take an upper bunk because someone in your room has been, has an accommodation for the lower bunk. So, but we will tell you if that's the case. Otherwise it's uh, open pick when you get there. Very good. And of course, it's probably important to note as well that all the beds are the same, right? And they're all yes. so the room can be moved around, right? So if someone doesn't want something next to the window, they can, of course, discuss that and move things, right? Uh, some of the furniture can be moved. So on South Campus, the beds are largely where they need to be. We don't move that those around because they're in an approved place. There's, we have a... We, we pride ourselves on the building safety and we work very closely with Cal Fire and our campus fire marshal team. And they've created the layouts and approved the layouts of the rooms as they are now. So you can't change or like unbunk or de-loft a bed, for example. They have to stay as they are. Desks and dressers, you can move them around if there's an open space. As long as they don't block the main corridor in and out, the door, you can move those, those smaller pieces of furniture wherever you like them, or you can throw a a bean bag or something in there if you want to have some additional items in your space. Uh, but the but the main the the stacked and bunked furniture, the beds largely have to remain where they're at. Great. And then we do mention to folks mm -hmm. that the size sheets that they need would be twin extra large. Someone's asking if that's the same thing as a full or a double, which I know it's not. The dimensions it's not. Are yeah, twin extra long is at least eighty inches long. So. You're going to want to get, you want to make sure you get specifically to an extra long. They have them at almost all major retailers. If you know, you can go to Target, Walmart this time of year, they all have twin XL sheets. Definitely. Even some on online retailers where you can get yeah. that overnight two day shipping. You can pretty much get those anywhere at this point. All right. The next question, do I need to renew my housing contract for the second semester or the second year? Great question. Thanks for asking that one. We get it a lot. So you don't, your contract is for the year. So you do not need to renew for spring term. We're going to, we've, you've contracted with us for both fall and spring. We just only publish the fall information now. 
So we'll we'll in November we'll start sharing your spring meal plan, your spring room assignment. They're all they're the same. You're gonna move into this room. And you're gonna stay in this room unless you change or we change it for you. Um, so you when you move in, your spring assignment will be where your fall assignment is. We don't do a big shuffle, and you don't have to reapply for spring. Now when we get to uh, no, uh, when we get to um, February. You'll need to pay attention because if you're a first year, we have an, a we have a, a two year guarantee of housing. So if you want that housing next year, you need to apply for housing for 24, 25 in February. And you're guaranteed it as long as you apply on time. Perfect. And then are we allowed to bring any type of small television? Yes, you can bring televisions. Again, you'll have to I, I might recommend looking at your space before you buy one. Um, if you have one you want to bring most, I mean, flat screens have gotten so cheap mm -hmm. and we used to provide TVs in all lounges because they were expensive. And now we don't, we don't, most students don't want to use our TVs. They have their own, uh, but you want to err on the smaller side, um, you know, rather than bringing like something giant um, yeah, on that. If you go to the, um, the, the, what to bring on our website, we actually have the dimensions of the furniture. So if you want to get a sense for how wide the desk is, Right. So if you're looking at I'm going to have a 56 inch gaming plaza, right? Like that's not that's not going to work with the desk. It's not that big. Right. Your people, your roommates could be running into it. Like so just, you know, sometimes smaller is better. It's a good chance to think about the quality of the item rather than its size. Uh, but you're welcome to bring them. We don't provide cable, but you know, if it can, if it's a smart TV and you have a, you know, a fire stick or an Apple TV that you want to connect, it will it can connect to the Wi-Fi just like your gaming systems will connect to the Wi-Fi. Great. Now we do understand that there might be if you're on a lower level bed, so not something that's bunked, but if they have space under that area to fit maybe boxes like tote boxes mm -hmm. or something to that effect. Yeah, most of the beds are set up so that the bottom bunk actually has the dresser underneath it. So there's enough space usually for the dresser drawers, which is where most students want them. It's a pretty efficient use of space because then you can pull those items and pull those drawers out. Um, but you're welcome. Once you get things settled, as long, as long as your possessions don't block the path in and out of the room, um, you're welcome to put things or store things wherever you have space. Perfect. And then someone's also asking, are they able to bring an iron if they would like to iron their clothes? Is that an appointment? Yes. You, you are allowed to bring an iron. Do we, Although, have iron, be ironing boards? Do we have ironing boards for them or they need to bring the whole setup? Um, you know, I don't know that we do, although that might be a good thing for us to maybe look to provide down in the laundry room. So I'll make a note of that. Maybe we can have them, but we don't provide them now, I don't think. Okay. And same person, actually. We'll get to your next question as well. How about a steamer? <laughs> Related. Steamer. Yeah, a steamer. Um, you could bring that for sure. Perfect. And then will we be having any type of student activities, maybe social activities going on between the 22nd and the 28th before school starts? Yes, there will be a lot of student activities. I saw Lisa jump on. Do you know about student activities? <laughs> I do. I marked that one as answer live. Um, so everybody should have received their August newsletter electronically. I also dropped the link in the chat. And in that newsletter is information, number one, about bridge crossing, because I saw lots of people asking about the bridge crossing event and where to get your t-shirt. And that's in your newsletter. Um, also, there's information about Ascend, which is a, a two-day conference that we have for our students who have moved in, and you'll get more information about that in your email as well. And then Welcome Week kicks off when you move in, so there will be lots of activities going on and events uh, to keep you all busy and to help you get acquainted with our campus. Oh, and the other thing that you're probably wondering, we offer um, classroom tours. So watch for that information to come out because right before school starts, uh, we'll have those organized so that you can prepare and know where your classes are on campus before the first day. We try to get you guys completely set up so that day one, you just wake up, you brush your teeth, throw your clogs on, whatever you're gonna wear, and you just take off to class and you are set for success. All right, the next question, where do we pick up our bridge crossing t-shirts? And that's in the newsletter and I left it up hang on really quick oh i lost it it is monday august 26 it's pretty much all day it's 9 a.m to 4 30 and it's in sentinel rock 145 which is what we call our commuter lounge 
and it says your cat card is required. So make sure you bring that with you. Great tip. And just for everyone, if you don't have that chat window open, go ahead and do that now. We've been dropping a ton of links there. Again, the, the uh, YouTube video for Bobcat Life to give you an inside glimpse into a dorm room. There's also the newsletter that Lisa just mentioned. We also have that dropped over there for you, as well as a one sheet flyer that gives you all of the what to bring, what not to bring, little tips and tricks there as well. So make sure that you guys are clicking on those before we start to wrap up. All right, the next question has to do with mail. How do students get mail and how do they send things? Question. So let me uh, get back to my slide here. So on your housing portal, you'll see your room assignment and then you'll see your mailing address. Oop. Um, that shows right below your room assignment and it'll show you how to address your mail to receive it. Um, it so you'll need it at 5400 North Lake Road, then Merced, California 95340. That's your mailing address, of course, with your name on it as well. So you'll need, you'll want to, um, uh, you can send packages. Make sure you make sure that uh, your name is if you know, is matches what your name is, uh, like on the housing portal. So, uh, and then uh, we you you'll send your mail to that address. Our staff will receive it. So what happens is UPS, UPS, they all bring in these big like carts of mail, and then they bring it to our office. Anything addressed to fifty four hundred, and then we have a team of about twenty student employees that goes through that mail. And they're constantly updating it. We have um, we have uh, lockers that you can use uh, to that we put packages in that you can pick up at any time using a phone. We have an app called Smiota, and maybe one of the housing assistants can drop the. There should be a page, uh, web page that talks. Uh, I think it's in the resident resources. There's a section on mail, and um, that will have the. Um, the how to download the Smail to app so that you can use that to get notifications about mail, open the mail lockers, um, and sign for and receive packages. Uh, we'll send you, a, we do a lot of communication about mail through email. So when we get a package for you, we send you a notice to your UC Merced email address. So one of the best things you can do if you're expecting stuff is just make sure that you're checking your UC Merced email regularly. All of our housing communication is gonna be pointed at that email address. Um, if you do have a cell phone number um, in your profile, we will also send a text message notification about packages in the locker. We don't send text messages about um, you, you uh, like standard USPS postal service mail. Um, you pick that up at the resident services desk when we send you emails that you have some. So there's lots of ways. I mean, we have we have a big team processing mail regularly. Uh, the first few days when it's very busy, we get almost four or five packages per student. So we process thousands and thousands of packages a week in, in late August and early September. So it may add a day or two, a business day to your delivery. Um, and this, so what will happen is you'll see that your package will, Amazon will tell you they've dropped it off, but they have, they've dropped it off with 3,000, 300 other packages, right? And so we have to then take all those packages and then process them and get them either into a locker or get them into our mail room and notify you that we have it. And so it can take an extra day, although most of our mail is processed within a business day of arrival. Very good. And now I've seen this question come in two different times. So I think it's important to mention. Now I know in the what to bring, what not to bring, we do tell people to not bring any type of weapon or dangerous item, but mm -hmm. Do we allow any type of less lethal items such as pepper spray for more of a self-defense if people maybe are walking on campus at night? Yeah, you can bring pepper spray, no tasers, um, like, but you can use uh, self-defense pepper spray, um, not like combat level pepper spray. Whatever is legal in California is legal on campus for that. So. Perfect. And then I'll also mention, I'm definitely not the expert on this, but we do have the University Police Department. If anyone else wants to chime in, please feel free or drop links into the chat for everyone that's listening. But I do know that we have the blue lights across campus. You probably have seen similar items at other places, either parking lots or other campuses, other public places and venues, but they're there for you. So if you just, for some reason, you're walking across campus, maybe you're alone, maybe you're not, but you just think, you know what, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable. I have a long ways to walk and I'd like to have an escort or just check in with someone, they are, I don't know the exact distance between them, but you can stand at different places on campus and see a very long line of those blue lights. So they are pretty close together. You just punch a button on there and you'll hear the dispatch come on and they will definitely direct you or they can send someone out if you see something that's a little concerning 
or just to get you from point A to point B if you do feel like you just want a little bit extra support or companionship when you're walking. I've been at UC Merced for 10 years. Of course, I'm a pro staff, so I don't live there, but I have been there at night many, many times. I can personally tell you that I have never felt unsafe there. So it is like a little community in and of itself. So hopefully you don't ever get that feeling. But if you do, we have a fully trained professional law enforcement team that is on campus with years of experience. And they are professionals just like anyone that you would see at a local city police or sheriff's department. So hopefully that will help uh, folks feel a little bit safer as well. And if you find yourself wanting a little extra support, um, they do offer, there are campus safety escorts that are offered through that, um, through the police. So they have, these are usually students who are vetted and go through a, a, some training and then they will come out and meet you and can walk with you. If you if you have a very late shift, for example, um, one of the best things I recommend is that you just, you start meeting people and introducing yourself and building up your community. That's one of the things that's gonna help keep you safe when you transition here is building up people. Um, it's more important even than some of the resources like, I mean, pepper spray has its place, but what's more important is that someone knows, you know, someone and they know to expect you and you've made friends and it kind of helps, helps you uh, ask for assistance and it also helps other people help you. Most definitely. And I will just leave off with this little piece too. There's not too many times I've ever really seen the campus completely silent with people. There's typically people walking around milling about even at night because you figured you're living there and the food services are there. So there typically is, are people, their libraries open late. So people might be studying and walking around. So again, I feel pretty safe there. Um, hopefully we've been able to address that question here. We have a couple more questions to get to before we do close out tonight. So will there be uh, at the student center, will there be any type of counselors that will be available or academic advisors? And Lisa, I saw you pop on. I am not sure that academic advising will be um, open on Saturday and Sunday, but they will definitely be open on the normal weekdays. Our Students First Center, which is our campus one stops, we can help you with admissions, um, general registration, financial aid, billing. We will be open on Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 2, um, and we'll also be open on the normal days of the week. So there will be lots of support, um, and we're ready to help you. Awesome. Did you want to also take a moment to talk about course registration? Yes. So a couple of reminders, because it is 7.59. Um, you, you all have a checklist in your Connect account, which is your student portal. Everybody should log in tonight and double check that their checklist is complete. By now, you should have submitted your final transcripts from wherever you attended prior to UC Merced. You want to see that either checked off or in the yellow triangle status. Um, by now, you should also be registered in at least 12 units. 15 is preferred. 12 is kind of what's required. Um, and then most of you should have already received your bill and seen the type of financial aid that you're going to be receiving if you applied. If those things are not done for you, please, please, please contact us tomorrow. Um, or you can email us right now and we'll get back to you tomorrow. Um, Amy just dropped our contact information in the chat. We are ready to help you. We want to make sure that you're ready to, you know, kind of kick this semester off strong and get all of those things accomplished. Yes, and I always like to give a little extra tag to the Student First Center. It's near and dear to my heart as being someone who used to work with Lisa Perry a couple of years ago. They are the experts. So if they don't happen to know any information about a specific topic, I promise you, if they can't hand walk you there now because the campus has doubled in size in the last few years, they will definitely give you a warm handoff to the right person. So they literally are the one-stop shop. They will give you the help that you need. So do not hesitate to ask for help there in any of the many ways that they have. They have a myriad of, myriad of ways that you can reach out to them. So definitely take advantage of that email address or check out their website. I have two more quick questions and then we can go ahead and start closing out here. They happen to be about bridge crossing. So I know that you guys mentioned that there is the newsletter what time is bridge crossing? We can just mention that quickly to folks. And also, are family members able to hang out for that or return back to support? Yeah, family, you are all welcome to come and cheer your students on as they cross over that bridge, which is our tradition for kicking off the semester. Um, let me see what time bridge crossing is. I don't know, Scott, do you know that off the top of your head? Not off the top of my head. 
Okay. I can, I can look, I was just working on something for that. Give me okay. like two seconds. And I'll drop it in chat. Okay. If I can find it. Perfect. One more question. Then I'll go ahead and toss in. It's about the bathrooms in the dorms and the mm -hmm. floors, how those work. Are they co-ed or is it segmented by gender? Yeah. So the bathrooms, so it depends which building you're in. So for those on South Campus in Glacier, Granite, El Portal, and Sentinel Rock, the bathrooms, there are two gender, there's two gendered bathrooms per wing. So the buildings tend to have two wings on each floor, and there's a, a male and female large bathroom with showers and toilets and everything in, in each of those wings. Each wing also has a gender neutral bathroom, which is a single use bathroom for one person that has a shower and its own stall. So there's different options on each floor um, available. If you go uh, the bathrooms in the summits, which are Tanaya, Cathedral and Half Dome, those are gendered bathrooms. Uh, and the Valley Terraces and the Sierra Terraces those are suite style. So the there's no common bathrooms for everyone. The suite shares a bathroom. So you might be in a two or three bedroom suite that it shares either a bathroom in the middle between the rooms or it shares a bathroom within the suite. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Scott. I know I said only one more, but I have one more. I promise this is it. It's an important one. I think, Lisa, you can help out. It's the question you saw come in about deferred payment. So if they've made their first payment, are they all set for a little bit? In theory, yes. If you made your first payment, you should be done for this month with your bill. If you want to double check, you can reach out to the students first center tomorrow and we can double check for you. But you should also be able to see in your my bill that it'll say like nothing is due now. So great question. Yes, definitely. And so he just posted bridge crossing 9 a.m. Oh, there we yep. go. So there's going to be more details coming out. I'm actually working on communications right now with student affairs on the details, but there is a parade. So there will be, uh, <laughs> yes. there will be 30 carts of which we will be there to cheer you on since you were, we were with you from the very beginning. We sent you that very first email to come to UC Merced. So we'll be delivering you to campus. Um, there's a parade. It does start at nine o'clock, but there's details are coming out probably this week um, once they are approved. So be sure to check your email. Excellent. And I can speak from experience. I'm not even going to try to pretend that I'm not a big crybaby on those days. It is such an inspirational thing to go through to see all of you guys starting at the beginning, as Amy mentioned, and then we get to watch you go all the way through the whole process until graduation, which is another tearjerker for me personally. But we love to just get to know all of you on the front end while you're still applying and then getting accepted and now starting your big journey as a bobcat here at UC Merced. So again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. This has been recorded. We will make sure to get that link out to you in various ways. It will be on the admitted of uh, the events page where you registered for the event. You will see that come up there. So you'll be able to find it. If you subscribe to our YouTube page, it will give you that reminder that, hey, we posted something new. Come check us out. And also all of our social media platforms, we will also be posting the in case you missed it link. So we definitely want to make sure that you have access to this. There was so much great content that was talked about tonight not only in the presentation, but these amazing questions that came in. And of course, we would not be here if it wasn't for all of you wonderful Bobcats that are getting ready to join us here in just another couple of days. So if you do have additional questions, please feel free to reach out to the Students First Center or any one of us. If you just take, took a note of our name, go ahead and send us an email message and we will get back to you or at the very least get things directed over to the right people. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill, your e-recruiter. I'm so thrilled, in case you couldn't tell, to meet you all very soon outside of the virtual realm. So we are looking forward to seeing you on campus and welcome to the Bobcat family. Thank you so much for joining us. We will see you very soon. Have a great night, everyone.